This is the new Judge Dredd uh, miniatures game from Warlord Games' core rulebook, based on Judge Dredd, the 2000 AD comic strip. Uh, this game is using the same rule system as Warlord has used for previous games, um, like well, Strontium Dog, uh, to name the exact previous game. Also set in the 2000 AD universe, um, with the bounty hunters and mutants and so on. Anyway. As you have come to expect from Warlord, the artwork in this is on point. They've used the Judge Dredd license and worked with Rebellion really, really well. There's a really nice introduction to the book um, about you know, the first trip to the comic book store by uh, Roger Garish and, and uh, his one, well, one of his first trips to the comic book store buying a Dredd comic and uh, how his love for the game led to this point in time. There's background on Mega City 1, why it exists, and the core rules which you obviously need to play. Now it uses the same dice that Strontium Dog always used to use which have the 2000 AD special symbol on them, um, the shield symbol for defensive rolling and the hit symbol. So you use one dice for whatever you're doing and the rolls will um, Basically, if I'm rolling to hit somebody, I've rolled hits, that's good. If I'm rolling to defend, I only rolled one shield, that's not that good. I didn't roll any special symbols, so any special things that could have come into, into, into action during, say, that being a roll for defense, that could have made something special happen, like a gunfighter rule where my character not only defends, but dives out the way because I got the 2000 AD symbol. Um, so yeah, the basic game mechanic revolves heavily around these dice and the cards or stat lines of your characters. There's not a huge el uh, much else to playing the game. It's very fast paced because of that. It uses the same activation chip system that Strontium Dog uses, although I think you get gold and blue uh, chips in here. So if you've already got Strontium Dog, you've got two extra colors, which is awesome. So you can start having four player games already. Um, so yeah, the, the, the way the chip system work is, uh, works is explained in the core rules later on, but it's the random activation that Warlord tends to use so often, where these go into a blind bag um, and the activation order of your characters is determined by the chips. Now, the Strontium Dog system and the Dread system use the star chip, so certain really good characters can uh, try and put a chip back in the bag, allowing them to sort of reactivate again in the same turn, so activations aren't definite. Then you've got the uh, small tokens like the health markers, the stunned markers, uh, the having done a sprint maneuver markers and pin markers and things like that, which, uh, is that one? That might have been one. Um, pin markers and, and things that might help people throughout the game and denote different actions being taken. Um, the book itself has very similar core rules. Uh, all the new weapons are listed in the book, as well as all the current uh, released characters and their stat lines. They're also found in here too. Um, the book itself goes through a nice quick action phase there. And slightly further into the book, oh, so you, your, your simple actions are things like take a quick shot rather than a longer, steadier aim shot. An aim shot will be two actions, which allows you to you know, get bonus stats to those, which could be rolling more dice for the hit or rolling more dice for the damage done. Uh, throw weapons, sort of fist fight things, single move, uh, d double actions and stuff might be charging into fights, things like that. So aimed fire is a double action shoot rather than a quick shot. Hunker down, hide, take cover, um, recover some health points. Depending on who you're playing as, you have different abilities there. Um, dodging hits comes into play, for example, when you roll your defense dice and a 2000 AD symbol comes up. It's all very similar to the Strontium Dog, if not the same as the Strontium Dog game, and that worked really well, so I'm glad that they've kept this as well. So bullet time and the gunfighter rule, that refers to as you dodge out of the way, you immediately get to roll to attack again, um, and, and the attacks go on simultaneously, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Close combat rules appear to have been tidied up a little bit. Previously, they were a little bit confusing. Um, what I haven't been able to find so far is the number of hits you can take per turn. In Strontium Dog, you never used to be able to take, I think it was more than three wounds in one phase. Um, that doesn't seem to be here at the moment, but I'll have a more thorough look through the rule book to see if I can find that. Um, there's rules for mounted models as usual. There's also rules for destroying uh, unoccupied mounts, so I anticipate there being missions where you have to get onto motorcycles. I know there are Dread models, a model for Dread on and off of the bike, as well as some of the other judges, so perhaps that's going to be a thing in games. I mean, this is your game. You can play it however you want. Um, vehicle movement and stuff as well. Now, this is interesting because these vehicles are going to be released by Warlord in future. The little hover cars and the 
little uh, plastic um, uh, resin vehicles, um, the larger trucks. So movement for the vehicles being in the rule book is quite interesting. They can ram and they can shoot. Passengers can get it, disengage and, and, and board vehicles. And they also have heights they can fly at, grab vehicles. So this section of the rule book is quite an interesting one. I haven't seen anyone playing with anything like that yet. So these grav pods, um, you might have seen our video that we did with Charlie from Warlord. There was a grav pod crashed in the rubble to the side of the uh, the playing area that we were using. So that was snuck in there a little bit. Um, so yeah, the damage to vehicle tables and vehicle statistics are all in there. So that's really cool. I mean, this this game normally plays on sort of like a three by three board, but you can massively open it up to start to have. I'd love to see some uh, city uh, highway fights with vehicles and crashes and stuff. And the boards that Warlord have put out in some of their pictures look absolutely amazing. Um, this this I think I was speaking to my colleague earlier would work really well with some of the battle systems terrain um, with the multiple levels and stuff. In fact. We have some of that here, um, which you know is used for like core space uh, and well any game system really. Battle systems do really good. Um, so this is engineering sector, which has got all bits of um, CO2 sc uh, oxygen scrubbers, CO2 scrubbers, blast shields, crates, ladders, um, furnaces, uh, and then this is a Gothic ruin set. Maybe not quite so dready, but could definitely be used some somewhere. Um, they do hundreds of these ranges, and they're almost perfect for dread very affordable as well um so yeah the, the, some of the stuff that warlord have been putting out has been awesome um and there's lots of terrain rules as well open terrain blocking terrain difficult to cross terrain and, and height appears to be playing a role too uh, which is awesome so we've got a nice little board we're building which has multiple levels of like a plaza city center um, jumping between buildings, so there's a bit of free running going on there, leaping and climbing as standard, falling can happen, you can fall safely or you can fall badly. Um, so yeah, you know, characters charging around, running each other over, uh, climbing on buildings, um, you know, playing with your little grav tanks and uh, grav trucks. Ooh, maybe I shouldn't have shown you that. I don't know if I'll get in trouble for showing you this, I best take it away again. Um, those aren't out for a while. Armory cards, uh, armory and chicanery cards. Oh, that's, um, this is actually just the weapons armory, giving you all the information about the pistols. Um, the, so the games that we've played with the uh, gang members, the regular block gang, tended to use the spit pistols and the hand cannons. Hand cannons seem to be very powerful. I really enjoyed using the hand cannon in fights. Um, tends to be the low end gangers and the middle gangers. Didn't really do much with the combat rifles and sniper rifles. Um, Stump gun, sawn off stump gun and auto stump, again, very powerful gang weapon that we saw there. Very similar stats to some of the Strontium dog weapons, but these have a lot more special rules to them. There's a lot more auto firing. Um, the knockback rule is something that I hadn't really seen in Strontium dog. So regardless of whether you do damage or not, if you're hit by a stump gun, a shotgun type gun, you will get knocked back and it's on a D6. Um, so the game still uses D6 for certain things like that. Um, there's a lot of refined rules which make it just very, very fun. Again, loads more beautiful artwork, uh, close combat weapons. Some of these come on cards that you can play quickly, just like um, the Electronux from Strontium Dog, and others are just permanently equipped. I think Culinary Laser was um, a, a card that you could play from the... They're not chicanery and armory cards in this now. They're big meg and armory cards uh, in this game. Uh, blast weapons, the same thing as the previous rules in Strontium Dog. If you're close to the center of a blast, you take more damage, and the further away, the less damage you take. You can still dodge a blast weapon. Any character gets an innate bonus to dodge from a blast weapon. Um, here we cover the armory cards. There's some really amusing armory cards in the game, all themed around Mega City 1, and some from the comics. Uh, you have to have to have a leaf through them, really, to see them. Some of them really did make me chuckle. Um, and then yeah, the variety of hand grenades that can be used, hand bombs as they're referred to in the rules. Um, I haven't had to play with too many of those yet. Unfortunately, there is no time bomb in this, but there's no reason why you can't uh, perhaps bring some Strontium cards in. Uh, can of boing and getting boinged is a thing in this too. That um, was a bit of, bit of a painful card to uh, have hit you. Um, and the big meg cards are basically those cards which uh, would have been the chicanery cards beforehand. They are the things you can play that quickly happen uh, and they represent you know, the unexpected uh, dynamic of being in Mega City 1. 
then you got all of the information on the currently available characters. Now, my only assumption with this is because we have all of the judges listed, the stat profiles, um, notoriety. Interestingly enough, if we look at like the notoriety, they're very high. They're not really in line with the Strontium dog stuff. If we look at, um, for example, uh, Johnny and Wolf and their notoriety and um, well, the Gronk, if we need to look at the Gronk, they've got a notoriety of like three. Um, and as you go in towards the muties, they have a notoriety of like plus two, two, one. So the, I, I think maybe there needs to be uh, a conversion chart. Perhaps there is character cards with this that would help you convert these. It depends. I'm not really sure how we work the, that out yet. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Most of you guys will be just looking at J Judge Dredd right now. Um, so there are stat profiles for all of the... So there's Dredd on his Lawmaster. Um, stat profiles for all of the available characters, the side judges that are coming soon. So it appears that Warlord has planned pretty far ahead with this release and this rulebook, um, which is nice. There are ones... For example, there is a stat profile for um, the Angel Gang, the um, Mean Machine Angel, but not the rest of the Angel Gang. Now, I've been well informed by Warlord that there are other Angel Gang members coming. So I assume that they will have cards in the boxes that they come in, similar to the card you could get for Strontium Dog, which would be nice. The cards in this are more um, playing card style, size and style, rather than the much larger cards that Strontium Dog had. Um, but as long as you can get your hands on them, that would be good. And to be honest, I prefer having the physical cards on the table to having the details in the book. Um, and if I don't own the characters, then I don't mind them not being in the book. And I know some people want to use older, like the Mongoose characters and characters from previous Dread games, so they probably like them to be in here already, but they're probably going to become available online pretty easily anyway to find the stat lines. Um, so it's to, to me, it's neither here nor there. Um, Judge Death is very cool. Obviously, the Death Judges are all available. Judge Grice, uh, you've got the Doomsday Judges, the Orlock the Assassin, and some of the other Denzins of Mega City. You've got some of the... Uh, interesting characters there uh, and also these give you information on how you can use them so if we go um, information about the block gangs and how the block gangs can play and the characters you can play with them uh, there's Mean Machine Angel for example it tells you who they're allied with this was probably the best example of one of the characters it seems to go across all of them because uh, Homer Blint comes in the Denzian's box along with his wife and a few other characters um, and it's you know explains how he can be allied with people uh, and in scenarios he can basically work with any Body. There's freelance working with the block gangs, working with the city deaf, you know, if, if he's doing um, surveillance. Um, so he's a nice cross character. So there's loads of options to play. Um, and to be honest, this rule book will take you quite a while to read cover to cover. Um, the fatties, League of Fatties, ally with anyone who has food. There's always an option. Um, calorie crazed corpulence carry out a snack attack. Interesting. Um, got to love the League of Fatties. And then you've got all of your scenarios towards the end as well, um, what to play through, uh, how to do those. The other thing worth noting is um, the book that comes with it is very similar to the Good, the Bad and the Mutie book, um, which gives you the introductory scenarios to play through. So the scenarios in this book, the heist and the raid and rumble, uh, ambush and foot chase, um, the, if you start from... You know, one onwards, you they'll get progressively more complex. The first scenario in the Get to Play book is similar to Foot Chase, um, but then you've got some slightly different ones. I think it's called Sugar Rush, um, which is basically this ambush one, but scaled down. Um, I forget what the, the last one is. Not called Rumble, but again, it's very similar to this scenario and scaled down. Um, so before you jump straight into these scenarios, you can play sort of scaled down versions of them to get used to the game. Unless you're a Strontium uh, seasoned player, then you probably won't need those. Um, and then there's all about notoriety, increasing notoriety and playing through campaign missions. It's, um, oh, and, and as with Strontium Dog, all the cards pictured in the back that come with this set, so you can see what they all do. But uh, yeah, it's a really solid rule book. Um, it's not very different in terms of rules from Strontium Dog, but it's a far thicker book, so they put a lot more into this, as you can probably see um, from those two. Well, it doesn't look hugely thicker on camera, I assure you it is uh, a good sort of 30% thicker at least.
yeah, there's at least 50 pages more in there. This was 158 to 100. Um, so, yeah, I'm really looking forward to playing more games of Dread. If you want to see the games being played, check out some of our other videos. Uh, we've done Scenario 1 and then talk about what is Dread, and we have a few more coming, as well as some heads up on new releases when they come, which you'll be able to see here first.